A sham recount in Arizona. Arizona's bizarre recount. Deranged recount. Daffy recount. Bananas recount. A grift disguised as an audit. The 2020 recount in Arizona might sound pretty dumb, but in fact, it's even dumber and more dangerous than it sounds. Here's why. We've all had a problem that we've wished we could solve with an army of ninjas. Get down! Well, Republicans in the Arizona State Senate are living the dream. Their problem is that former President Donald Trump lost Arizona in 2020 by a wafer-thin margin of 10,000 votes. And their solution is to call up the Cyber Ninjas, a company from Sarasota, Florida, that's now auditing all of the 2.1 million ballots in Maricopa County. Never mind that a hand recount and an audit of the voting machines have both already happened and showed the election outcome was perfectly fine. Those were just normal audits. This is a ninja audit. And in a ninja audit, you get to check for stuff that is fucking crazy. Take the idea that sprung from QAnon message boards that Trump's Department of Homeland Security secretly stamped real ballots with a watermark to lay a trap for stupid, vote-frauding Democrats whose phony ballots could later be exposed. According to QAnon lore, this lines up with the cryptic advice from Q, the cult's anonymous oracle, to watch the water. Sure enough, out in Arizona, the ninja auditors started out scanning the ballots with UV light looking for watermarks. Until they didn't find any. Because, well, you know. Then there's the unfounded rumor that somehow 40,000 fake ballots were secretly shipped over from Asia. What they're doing is to find out if there's bamboo in the paper. Why do you check for bamboo? Because they use bamboo in their paper processing. Who's they? Uh, people in Southeast Asia. So that you feel like that's 40, what they say. Forty thousand ballots have been. Yeah, I don't believe any of that. Okay. I'm just saying that is part of the mystery that we want to ungaslight people about. Oh boy! Now, not all theories about fraudulent ballots are so racist. The auditors have also been checking the ballots for their thickness and feel because those phony ballots. They chafe a little. The guy who's running this operation, Doug Logan, swears he's just trying to get the facts. If we go through here and we don't find any fraud, I'm gonna be ecstatic, yeah. okay? But a lot of people aren't buying that because Mr. Lead Ninja was a big backer of Trump's Stop the Steal campaign before he recast himself as Mr. Objectivity. There's his now deleted Twitter account where he retweeted election conspiracy theories including one from Ron Watkins, the guy widely suspected of actually being Q. Watkins says he is totally not Q. I am not Q. <clears throat> the ninjas are trying to determine whether the ballots were filled out by a real human or by a machine, using technology designed to look for something called kinematic artifacts. Now, I have tried to understand what those are, and I don't. But maybe the tech's inventor, Jovan Hutton Pulitzer, can explain it to us. Well, did you know from a forensic level that you can tell absolutely the difference between paper here in the United States or paper that was made in China? While looking at the paper ballots through our systems, we're not only able to tell was the ballot actually folded and mailed, but we're also able to track did it go through the postal system and get accounted for? Okay, sure. By the way, Pulitzer's legacy also includes QCAT, a cat-shaped barcode reader that PC World magazine listed in 2006 as one of the 25 worst tech products of all time. With one swipe, the QCAT can read any product code, such as a UPC or ISBN code. He's also dabbled in treasure hunting. We're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, who among us? And Arizona isn't his first election rodeo. Pulitzer testified before the Georgia State Senate to say the Peach State's election results should be considered suspect too. In response, 
Georgia's Republican Secretary of State blasted Pulitzer as a, quote, failed treasure hunter with no evidence to back up his claims. It's not every day you hear a top state election official mocking a witness for writing a book called How to Cut Off Your Arm and Eat Your Dog, and for making claims about an ancient sword with, yes, magical magnetism in a scandal dubbed Hashtag Swordgate. <laughs> It really is not every day. But God, I wish it were. This whole audit shindig is being paid for by, well, actually, for the most part, we don't know. The IRS doesn't require donors to disclose, so it's mostly dark money. But some prominent people are publicly raising a lot of money for it. Christina Bob, a reporter with One America News, who's also covering the audit from Phoenix, has raised at least $150,000. And former Overstock.com executive Patrick Byrne, who loves conspiracy theories so much that his latest gig is an organization devoted to funding them, claims to have raised over $1.7 million. And oh yeah, the state senates fronted more than $150,000 of, yes, Arizona tax dollars. The fun doesn't stop there. One volunteer ballot counter also happened to be a former member of the Arizona House who was photographed on the steps of the Capitol during the insurrection. And the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. has said the handling of the ballots may be so reckless that it could be breaking the law. Now, you might think that this clown car of conspiracy theorists wouldn't have a lot of gas. Au contraire. Let's see what they find. I wouldn't be surprised if they found thousands and thousands and thousands of votes. The former president is obsessed with the Arizona audit. Apparently, he asks about it multiple times a day, especially the UV light thing, which, okay, fine, that's not a surprise. Supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. All this is a wacky new verse in what's become GOP gospel. Trump's big lie must not be questioned, even when the big lie is bonkers. And if you don't buy that, well, you're out. Ask Liz Cheney. She was the number three Republican in the House until May 12th, when she got the boot from party leadership because she refused to accept that Trump should have won. And this is where Arizona feels like a signpost for the GOP's future. Cheney is far more conservative than her replacement, Elise Stefanik, who actually opposed Trump's foreign policy, called the U.S.-Mexico border wall unrealistic, and even voted against his tax cuts. But Stefanik is loyal to Trump where it counts. I fully support the audit in Arizona. We want transparency and answers for the American people. What are the Democrats so afraid of? More than half of Republicans still say the election was rigged. For Trump, this whole thing is the ultimate flex. Forcing top-ranking Republicans to say things they know aren't true is a way of showing he's still the boss. Here is the top House Republican, Kevin McCarthy, right after the riot. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. And here he is, three months later, throwing Liz Cheney under the Trump bus. I think she's got real problems. I, 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 I've had it with, I've had it with her. It's, you know, I, I've lost confidence. Well, someone just has to bring emotion, but I assume that will probably take place. Now maybe the cyber ninjas will manage to debunk these conspiracy theories and prove the whole thing was legit. But it sure seems a lot more likely that their big final report will somehow manage to find reasons to think that Trump has a point. And then, don't expect it to stop in Arizona. Trump and his allies want to take this show on the road to all the other battleground states from 2020. After that, you'll watch Pennsylvania, and you watch Georgia, and you're going to watch Michigan and uh, Wisconsin, and you're watching New Hampshire. They found a lot of votes up in New Hampshire just now. The fact that there's no legal or constitutional way to rewind the last election, even if this audit weren't just a loopy conspiracy treasure hunt, is beside the point. The Arizona audit is breathing life into wackadoo conspiracy theories because just by actively looking into them, you're suggesting they might be true. Like what if I just look under your bed to make sure there's not a monster there? It doesn't matter that there's no there there. Or that, if they do say they found something, most people won't believe them. I mean, they're not truth ninjas. Because by sowing the doubts of online conspiracy theorists deeper into the fabric of our politics, this audit is amping up for what's coming. Or rather, what's already here? 
welcome to Trump's 2024 campaign. You're already living. 